We know stocks were surging all year on hopes for tax cuts. Well, now we got them, signed, sealed, and delivered. Are they enough to deliver another rally? Let's ask Catherine Rooney Vera, Jonas Max Ferris, and Gary Kaltbaum. Good to see you all. Gary, I'm going to start with you. How are you thinking about this year? How, how are we set up? Um, and can we continue the upside? Well, so far going into the new year, I've, I've seen nothing, not even a 2% correction. And every time something tops out, something new shows up. And late in the year, we got retail, transport, energy, commodity, uh, commodities really strong as, as we move in. For me, the only thing that can stop the market right now is we've had not had a correction uh, in a very long time, and we're way overdue. So my bet is sometime during the year, we'll probably have a 5 to 10 percenter. But as long as interest rates stay low, as long as these maniac central banks uh, keep printing money and keeping rates down at zero, and as long as uh, uh, earnings continue to be strong, which I do believe will occur, mm -hmm. I think the market will be okay, and I think we'll have another decent year. Uh, that all sounds kind of good, but you did throw that 5 to 10 percent correction in there. Let me ask Catherine. Which would uh, because, be normal. But, but, you know, there's a lot of good fundamentals out there, aren't there, Catherine? There are, and I'll say that I'll take the other side of that, Gary. I okay. don't think that markets die of old age. Economic cycles don't die of old age. There are some risks on the horizons, but it's not because we're due. And that's not how markets correct. So we could get a uh, surge in inflation, okay. and the Fed has to hike, feels itself behind the curve, uh -huh. has to hike more aggressively than the market is currently pricing in, which is two, three hikes max. But to get that surge in inflation, right. we need to start seeing uh, wages improve dramatically. Right. We, you know, Jonas, I mean, what, it's been 30 years and people haven't really gotten much of a wage increase. Um, it, it, we're barely keeping pace with inflation. Does that change given the tax cuts? Well, we never had tax cuts really going into this strong a situation, both low interest rates, real estate prices already going up, unemployment really low. Everything's really good, except you could, you could be honest, argue that wages is probably the only weak indicator. And again, it's not weak. It's just not going up as fast as everything else seems to be going up, house prices included. So no one really knows what's going to happen. There's no indicator that's going to say the market's going to tank or the economy's going to tank any more than there was in 2000 when the last time consumer confidence was about this high. Really, the only risk is too much confidence and too much, you know, it has to turn at some point. It's not going to go on for, it might not but, die but of old you, age, but it okay. does die. But, but and that's, compare. you don't know when it's going to happen. I, I want to follow that through, Jonas, because you're saying, you know, basically in 2000, suddenly Suddenly, everybody woke up and said, yeah, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense to have some crazy, insane valuation on uh, some sneaker company just because they happen to sell sneakers online. I mean, that was when reality right. caught up with people. But I'll tell you, as that whole thing was uh, uh, developing, I really questioned it. And I think a lot of people were out there questioning it. I don't know as I'm hearing as many questions right now, Jonas. Is that fair? I mean, it, it feels like economic fundamentals are improving. We got policy uh, yeah. that, that's making sense on the economic front. What is it that's crazy right now? Well, and that's the we might only be a 1997 argument. There could be a few more years of this to come before we get to really insane levels. The last two crashes and major recessions really happened because bubbles popped. Then it was tech stocks, and in 05, 06, 07, it was real estate, which was overpriced and too much of people's assets. We don't really have a tremendous underlying bubble, but I tell you, it's getting close both in stocks and this whole cryptocurrency thing. You know, how many trillions of dollars of market value do you think you have wrapped up in that before when that collapse happens, that causes a recession? I don't think we're quite there yet. But it's getting close to the dot-com bubble size in, in total value almost. So I think there's things to watch out for. And they're based in overconfidence and over this wealth effect going too far. It's too much of a good thing. But, I, again, we're probably not there yet. You probably could say it's got a couple more years before things get yeah. totally insane. I, I'll have to take the other side of that, too, because I do think there's a bubble in, in Bitcoin. But I don't think there's a bubble in the S&P 500. What moves equity, equity prices? It's earnings. What moves earnings? You know, growing your bottom line. You can do that very easily yeah, and very quickly by cutting taxes, cutting costs. What cuts costs? Well, right? You, can, you we, cut we costs by have a cutting taxes and, and cutting regulation, but, both of which are happening. Right, but by the same logic, so far, there so. was no bubble in the S&P 500 Let's, back in 05, okay. 06. It was the real estate bubble when that came down that took down the S&P 500. You could have the same thing of a different bubble coming right, down. Right, all right, so, but, but, but we don't see a bubble really on the horizon. And, Gary, you know, I know you talked about 5%, 10% correction, which would be, you know, theoretically healthy for markets. Those things happen all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing out there lurking as far as anyone sees right now in the here and now that could cause this whole thing to come crashing down. I mean, maybe if tax reform hadn't gotten through, Gary, but it did. Well, 
uh, let me say this, you never know what's on the horizon, but we still have massive debt, massive deficits. They are going to grow. And, but I said, as long as interest rates cooperate, that for me is the big uh, matzo ball out there, that if interest rates all of a sudden get out of hand to the upside, then I think the market uh, can take the hit. And, and let me but just that would, that would require all there I being all... a lot of inflation in the economy. N not necessarily. Just remember, we're very, very low. And if they just decide, to, if, if rates itself, just the market itself normalizes, you can go back into the threes and fours on the 10-year. I think that affects markets. But just to go back to one thing I said, because I don't think I was understood. All I'm saying is 5 to 10 percent would be as normal as normals can be. The one thing we didn't have in 2017 was a real good ebb and flow. You're supposed to have corrections along the way, and we didn't hardly see any of them. And I just think we're yeah. doing, I think probably 2018, we'll see it. But I think it's going to be a no biggie at this point in high time. High after high after high. Um, you're predicting 3,000 on the S&P, Catherine? Yeah, I think we get to 3,000. Of course, there's risks. You have geopolitical risks. You have policy risk. The administration could leave NAFTA and WTO. These are things that would precipitate a correction, I think, 5 to 10%. But with earnings growth validating current multiples, we can get to 20, 2950, 3,000, I think, by the end of next year. Wow. All right. We're watching all of it. It's so good to see you guys.